I think when President Obama used the words winning the future, he was referring actually to a new America. You know, the days of making things which sell only on price, the days of relying on a domestic market only, the days of saying, well, we're big, we're rich, we can cope, are over. And the future is actually how America, how the people in America come to terms with Asia's century. And I remember the Asia that will be the future isn't the cheap T-shirt, the cheap car. It's going to be an educated, skilled Asia. It's going to actually say, hey, I can meet you, America, on level terms. And how does America today prepare itself so that it can win in the future? That has to be skills. It has to be actually making stuff or providing services that the world wants. And at the same time, which is a little bit contracyclical or counterintuitive for America, it is actually to understand that globalization is not Americanization. That America can use her power of innovation, of hard work, of understanding and exploiting risk, and the melting pot of different cultures, ideas, thoughts, and actually go out from the shores of America and actually fight commercially to bring the bacon home. Now pull that off and, and, and uh, the future is for America to win. But she's got to get used to the fact that she has got company at the top table. And she is still going to be number one, but number one equal. And whether it is China or India, whether it's Russia or the European Union, Brazil maybe, you know, there are different influences, powers, vested interests, geographical locations that are going to change the dynamic in the next 80, 90 years in a way that hasn't happened before. And I think that's what Obama was trying to get to when he was putting the word win and future in the same sentence. So, for instance, if you look at coming out of the Great Depression, if you look at coming out of the 73 oil crisis, if you look at the 81 recession that did for so much commodity manufacture, if you look at the 91 recession, if you look at the 01 recession and then the huge banking crisis of a couple of years ago, in all of those, America's been able to use her enormous domestic strength to pull her, and indeed the world, out of the problem. Now, if you look at it this time, the world's changed. If America thinks that she can do all the usual stuff to get there, she'll have a nasty surprise, because in all of those examples in the past, she never had 1.3 billion Chinese and a billion Indians wanting your lunch. She's never been in a position where there is a skills base that actually is looking for uh, the provision of cheaper, but not necessarily worse, uh, manufacture and service provision and an enormous globalized market. So America has so often in the past been, uh, if you like, um, accused of its isolationism, its protectionism. It's got to break those shackles and actually understand globalization as something which it can really get hold of and take forward. One of the interesting points of the next couple of decades is going to be how does China do the global non-money stuff? If China's coming to the top table, um, how does it help sort some of these really difficult non-money issues that number one in the world has to get involved in that America has and has attracted so much criticism in the past? North Korea, Iran, Zimbabwe, it doesn't matter where these things are, they're issues that the world actually watches leading nations help sort out. And I think to see how China can bring her talent and can bring her, her understanding and her power to help with those issues will be something I think the world will expect to see. And at the same time, of course, especially from Europe, America has given generations of blood and treasure so that people can be free. I don't think Europe actually continues to understand that in a way that perhaps it should. But America can't rest on its laurels, but it does and must hold on to its values of freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom of assembly, and the ability to say, well, people can express themselves. And those values are important to the American people, important to morale. They're important, actually, to self-belief. And if anything, I think those values have to be re-energized at home so that morale increases. And then, if you add to that the innovation and hard work of the American people in a globalized economy, then actually I think America can look forward to a successful century.